Recently, I've been thinking about what I could salvage from this old computer of mine. I saw a couple videos of people lighting matches with a laser diode from an old DVD burner. And since this is exciting, dangerous and have the potential to blind you for a lifetime, it is perfect for YouTube. So in this episode of Hacks, I will show you how I extracted a laser diode and how I built a constant current source to use them properly. And at the end, we will see whether I'm capable of igniting a match with it. Let's get started. First of all, let's have a look at the DVD drive. As you can see, it is labeled with a class 1 laser warning. It is a low number because the laser is kept safe inside the case. Thus, this class is not capable of harming you at all. But right next to it, it says class 3B, which can blind you in an instant if the laser beam hits your eye directly. You have been warned. I started to open the case by removing the four visible screws. Then I took off the front plate and continued my tactic, which says see a screw, remove a screw. During this process, I also saved three more motors which could be useful for a future project. I continued to take the whole drive apart until I finally ripped out the heart, which is basically the driver head which moves over the DVDs. Here we can already see where the two diodes hide. Again, I used a screwdriver, soldering iron and some muscle force through my plier to take the whole construction apart. And I also found two neodymium magnets along the way. Those are always useful. Then I desoldered the flexible PCB from the diodes, used pliers to crush the glue and carefully removed the two diodes. Now I hooked up my positive wire to the top pin and my ground wire to the right pin. I slowly rose the voltage until around 18 milliamps were flowing and the diode was emitting its red light. Now we know this is the right one, not the infrared one. And everything still works fine. Let's move on to the housing and optics to focus the light. Luckily such a gadget already exists for low price. It even has different lenses which allows to create a laser point or even a laser line. I started by removing the sticker and cleaning off the remaining glue afterwards with some acetone. Then I unscrewed the lens and took out the spring, which reveals the diode inside. And of course, this diode is secured very firmly, which forced me to use my rotary tool with a drill bit to get it out of there. Now we need to completely free the laser diode from its heatsink. For that, I held it in place with a bench wise and used a small saw to cut a groove on each side. Then the diode pops right out of there. It fits perfectly inside the hole and after I added some wires with featuring tubing to it, I secured it with a bit of thermal paste to the lens carrier. But how do we power it? We could just put it on a voltage source like this high power LED right here. But through the rising temperature, the forward voltage drops over time and thus more current flows, which shortens the lifespan. It would be better to supply a constant current, which for example powers this high power LED with constant 330 milliamps, no matter how its forward voltage changes, due to temperature rises. The easiest circuit would consist of an LM317. But it is not power efficient, since the power which is not needed gets converted into heat. And because I want to control the current up to 500 milliamps, I would even need a 1 watt potentiometer, which can be a bit expensive. I like this circuit from my constant current load video much more. Check it out if you haven't watched it yet. I just changed a couple things around like using a rail to rail op amp and adding a 1 kilo ohm resistor on the gate to limit the input rush current. Building the whole circuit also took me only around 20 minutes and as always parts list, schematic and layout diagram is on instructables. But don't think this is more efficient than the LM317, they are both terrible at this. I will show you a more efficient way to do this in another video. Once the circuit is done, I can power all kinds of components with up to 500 milliamps. Doesn't matter what I connect, it will always try to push the set current through the components. 
Now it is finally time to connect my laser diode to the driver. And since this is dangerous for your eyes, always wear laser safety glasses during such projects. Now I adjusted my lens, tried different currents up to 400 milliamps and even painted the match black. And did it work? Well, no. I even tried a different laser diode, but all I'm getting is a bit of smoke and disappointment. But at least we learned something through the project. I hope you enjoyed this video anyway. As always, it would be great if you like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time with a functioning project. Hopefully. <laughs>